This is where a lot of the COVID-19 vaccines, those have been made and very proud of our team. We are honored to host today Governor Haley, Secretary Howe, and Dr. Goldstein. Thank you so much for your leadership and for being with us today. We are also very pleased to be joined today by the Massachusetts Life Science Center President and CEO, Kenneth Turner, and of course, all of you who are here today to represent this important day in the state of Massachusetts in life science. I am very humbled and honored to accept this grant from Massachusetts Life Science Center on behalf of Moderna. First and foremost, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the governor and to the team for this award. We are very, very proud to call Massachusetts our home. The company, as you know, was started in Massachusetts, and we are very proud to keep expanding in this state. We have had this partnership for many, many years since actually the company started. We are fortunate to benefit from the strength of talent and science in Massachusetts. Our dedication to Massachusetts is very strong. We just announced recently an expansion in Marlboro. At Moderna, our mission is to deliver for patients transformative medicine to change their lives. With the support of the state, we believe we're just beginning. Thank you so much, and Kenneth, it's all yours. Thank you, sir. So good morning, and thank you, Stefan, and thank you to the entire Moderna team uh, for welcome, uh, welcoming us to this state-of-the-art facility to celebrate how government and industry can work together to drive economic and workforce growth while also improving outcomes for patients, indeed, on a global scale. It's a pleasure to be joined not just by Moderna's leadership and their employees, but also companies located across the Commonwealth who my organization is proud to support. It's also a privilege to be joined by the Governor, the Secretary of Economic Development, Howe, Commissioner Goldstein, and so many members of the Massachusetts team. For those unfamiliar with the Life Science Center, we are an economic development and investment authority with a mission of supporting the growth and the development of the life sciences here in the Commonwealth. In terms of how we have executed on that mission, since 2008, we've invested more than $900 million into our life science ecosystem, which has generated $5.3 billion of leverage investments in the Commonwealth, and more importantly, I think, is the fact that we've created 16,000 jobs. A majority of those jobs have come through our tax incentive program. We're incredibly proud of how this program in particular supports innovation, job growth, and while encouraging the growth and innovation of, on a regional basis. Looking at this through our business development lens, it's important to note that we don't utilize our tax incentives to pay for every single job a company can support on its own. For me, it's about relaying to a company that we have your back. It's about creating that connection, that commitment to grow here in the Commonwealth, particularly when it comes to manufacturing. The competition is fiercer than ever, and companies have options other than us, and we are well aware of that. However, our strategy is in part to find the innovative companies with the greatest potential to grow and have established relationships with them and be able to sit down at the table and talk about how we can collaborate and work together. Moderna and this facility, I believe, is an incredible testament to that strategy. And they are not just a flash in the pan example. Countless companies with their R&D base in Kendall Square are finding their manufacturing footprint can be in Worcester, in Woburn, in Framingham. Moreover, I hope that we can begin supporting more companies looking to do their R&D in Worcester and manufacturing further west in Springfield or even the Berkshires and have their R&D and manufacturing right next to each other in places like Beverly or Brockton or Haverhill. And I'm bullish on this vision. For those of you who know me, I've been talking about this for a year and a half because of the individual opportunity that we give to everyday people people who erstwise would not have an opportunity to participate in our industry. 
And so we've got lots of exciting stuff that the Gov will be talking about just as early as next week at, at BIO. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I give to you Governor Mara Healy. Thanks, Kat. Thank you, Ken, and thank you to the team at the Mass Life Sciences Center for the work you do, uh, including getting these important grants out the door. We're really excited to be here today to celebrate truly as a team what's happened here in Massachusetts and more importantly to talk about what's going to happen here in Massachusetts. Uh, we pride ourselves in being the global epicenter for life sciences, and on behalf of the entire Healy Driscoll administration, I want you all to know that we are committed to not only retaining that title, but really lengthening that lead. I'm also um, grateful to be joined here today by incredible people who make this happen. To Stefan and the entire team, it really is so uh, incredible what you've done. We just came from a tour of this facility. There are multiple buildings on this campus, and the great news for our state is that more and more facilities and campuses of Moderna are opening, which is great, great for our state. But to see and to hear directly from those working in the field, including those who three, four years ago were working incredibly hard for all of us and then just had to really ratchet things up. And as a result of their efforts and what they did in the very spaces that we were just in, hundreds of millions of lives were saved all around this planet. It is truly an amazing story. We're so proud that the genesis is right here in Massachusetts. And as I look out at the different life sciences companies represented here who are receiving this today from the Mass Life Sciences Center, that story of possibility is, 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 exists within each and every one of our life sciences companies here. And that's, and that's why I am so proud to be from Massachusetts. I'm so proud to stand here with the team and, uh, and celebrate all of this. You know, as a team, know that these things don't happen without partnership. I want to thank Tony Mazuku and the town of Norwood uh, for all of your work in, in making so much of this possible. A lot of it comes down to permitting, siting, uh, regulation, and to have partners at the local level is so, so important. <clears throat> to our colleagues in the state legislature, uh, Representative John Rogers and Senator Mike Rush, who are with us today, uh, were it not for the big bet, that a prior governor, Governor Deval Patrick, made years ago, and the support of our Massachusetts State Legislature in funding the Life Sciences Initiative, we would not be the global epicenter that we are today. I mentioned Ken and the team at the Mass Life Sciences Center. Also from our team on the Healy Driscoll team, uh, Secretary of Economic Development, Yvonne Howe, Undersecretary Sarah Stanton, our uh, Public Health Commissioner, new Public Health Commissioner, Dr. Robbie Goldstein is here with us today. He was on the front lines during COVID, uh, and we're delighted to have him back here in Massachusetts. And he understands firsthand the importance, as does Kate Walsh, our Secretary of Health and Human Services, in investing in and supporting our life sciences ecosystem here. We're here as a team because our state's global leadership in life sciences is so important to our economy and to humanity, to the well-being of residents, families across this state, across this country, across the world. And we're going all in to make sure that Massachusetts not only protects our lead, but lengthens our lead in this critical global industry. Now, the story of Moderna represents the kind of global impact a leadership team can have. Uh, Moderna is a household name around the world because of their, the fact that the COVID vaccine that they manufactured and developed helped save millions of lives. And we are so proud that that success story is a Massachusetts story. We're going to claim that as a Massachusetts story as well, Stefan, because we really, we really believe in that. And it's a story about an innovation ecosystem that's really second to none. It takes guts. It takes risks. Uh, it takes a whole lot of work for the people inside this building. Um, and it also takes support from those outside of the building. And that's what we want to lean into, a transformational public-private partnership with this industry, with this, uh, with this company, and with companies around the state. In a little over a decade, this partnership with Moderna not only helped the world beat back a, a pandemic, it also importantly led to 3,000 
good paying jobs here in Massachusetts, uh, nearly 800 of them directly attributable to the, the relationship between the Massachusetts Life Sciences Center and this company. So we're thrilled to be back today announcing that we are sustaining and building on this partnership through our investment in life sciences. As Ken mentioned, our Life Science Center's tax incentive program will award today over $24 million to support 43 companies doing work here around Massachusetts. 24 million, 43 companies across the state. This funding is going to create over 1,500 new long-term jobs in the life science industry in Massachusetts. I want to congratulate all the grant recipients uh, for the award, but more importantly, thank you. Thank you for being here in Massachusetts. Thank you for putting your talent, your time, your energy, your smarts, your can-do into growing here in our state. We value you as partners here in Massachusetts, and we want to see you grow. Now next week, we've got a great opportunity to build on this momentum. We're hosting the International Bio Convention. So the International Bio Convention will be right here in Boston, in Massachusetts. Life science industry leaders are going to come from all around the world, and we will be making the case for our continued leadership. I know you know I'm a little bit competitive, um, and I don't plan on losing ground to, to, uh, to any other states or any other countries when it comes to life sciences. So we're in this to win um, at BIO, and as we move forward in the coming weeks and months, we want to make our state, remember, you know, we're about making our state more competitive, more affordable, and more equitable. And we're working on developing, uh, with public-private partnerships, pathways to all three things. That includes a workforce. That includes a workforce. We had good conversations today about our administration's investment in innovation pathways, in career technical institutes, in community colleges and vocational programs to help provide and grow a workforce together working with companies that will fill the jobs that are available here today. We're going to be Team Massachusetts every step of the way. And part of that means driving down some of the barriers to the workforce onboarding here in the state, including the cost of housing, which is something that we've leaned into with our new secretariat. So bottom line, we're going to leave everything on the field, everything on the court. It is about teamwork, as always, here in the state. And I look forward to the opportunities that we create, can create uh, in supporting our wonderful, wonderful life sciences industry that is truly changing uh, outcomes, changing the world, for the better. It's now my pleasure to introduce our Secretary of Economic Development, Yvonne Howe, who's doing great work all around the state. Thank you so much, Governor, and uh, thank you all. I want to just echo um, just so many of the messages said already. It is a huge honor to be here. Thank you to Stefan and the whole Moderna team for all that you've done, and it's just so impressive to see uh, how you're transforming the industry and, and saving so many lives. Um, huge thanks to Ken and the Mass Life Sciences, and I see a bunch of the team members here. Um, we, I, I, you know, I'm new to state government, so I'm learning about how closely we partner with our quasi-institutions, and we are so grateful to have Mass Life Sciences here. Um, huge thanks to our, our state legislature, legislative partners. Um, we could not do any of our work without this strong partnership. So really, uh, really grateful for that. And also to the town of Norwood, to, to Tony Mizuko. And also to our colleagues, Undersecretary Sarah Stanton and, um, and Robbie Goldstein from Public Health. Uh, we are so lucky to have this dream team working together. And uh, I feel very lucky to be here. The, I want to tell Stefan, I don't think I've ever, I don't know if you know the story. I first heard about Moderna in early 2016. Nobody else had ever heard of Moderna. It's this tiny little company back then. How many employees did you have back then? A couple hundred. A couple hundred. A small little startup. Um, so my, uh, so I'm, I'm four and a half months in this job. My entire career up until now has been in the private sector. So it's my first time in state government. I was working at Bain Capital in the Hancock Building, very fancy office, and a good friend of mine walked into my office and said, can we close the door? I need to have a, a confidential conversation. I said, yep, of course. And she said, I've, I've been reached out to by this little tiny company, and I'm thinking about leaving Bain Capital to go to this company, Moderna. And I was like, what? Like, you're going to leave Bain Capital to go to this little company I've never heard of? She started telling me about Moderna, and she said, I think this company has the potential to change the world. And the more she told me about it, the more I said, okay, you know what? Actually, I think it's worth it. You should go and take this risk, you know, leave our fancy headquarters at Bain Capital, and go join this startup. 
And she did. Her name is Annie Drapeau. She became the head of HR here. And I kept in touch with her. I just actually talked to her last week. And I, you know, in fact, you did change the world in more ways than any of us could ever imagine. The fact that 1.7 billion doses of the COVID vaccine were made here, I mean, you've changed the world, saved so many lives in so many ways. And so I'm so glad Annie took the risk. I'm so glad I heard about you back then. And it's really, truly remarkable to see what you've done. So I'm four and a half months in the job. And a big part of my job this year is that um, we are mandated by our friends in the legislature <laughs> once every four years in Massachusetts we have to um, do a formal state economic development plan, which means that by the, end of, by the end of the year, we're required to submit a written plan to the governor and the legislature, and then we have to bring it to life. I think, you know, we're going to have a pretty PowerPoint, but this is not to sit on a desk and, you know, or put in a drawer. This is to really think about how can we make sure we do the right things now to ensure success for many, many years to come. We have kicked it off. We have a council. We have several members of the life sciences community in that council and a sector working group. We're doing regional sessions around the state. We've done one in Springfield, one in Worcester, one in Bridgewater, and there's a bunch more to come. And I, those are open to the public, so I encourage all of you to participate. Um, we need all of your engagement, all of your ideas. This is not uh, the time to sit back and rest on our laurels. We have so much opportunity, but this is the time to actually take action and do the right things. There's two things I'd highlight as we think about this plan. Um, the first is that uh, we are not, we are starting from a great place. We're not starting from scratch. We are the world leaders. We are the epicenter of life sciences. And the governor will, will you know, speak to that next week at this global bio conference. But I know from my experience in business that when you're number one, you've got a target on your back. Everybody is trying to beat you and catch up. And so our goal here is, as the governor said, how do we lengthen our lead? What are the ideas and, and um, specific initiatives that we should be putting in place to make sure that we stay not only where we are today, but we lengthen the lead? And for us, this is what we do in Massachusetts. We work on wicked hard problems. We solve really tough things that have a really important mission to save lives. And in doing that, we also can make our state great by creating lots of different kinds of jobs. And so we need your ideas to think about, in life sciences, how do we lengthen that lead and, and do the right thing? So we're, we're excited to work on that together. The second thing I would say, though, is that um, this is about the whole state. And in life sciences, it's been so successful in Cambridge and in Boston. And we, of course, want to continue that, that, that lead and, um, and have intellectual property and to leverage all of our great research universities and all of that. But for us to be successful as a state, we need all of the state to be successful, and we need all of our humans to be successful. So one of the discussions we were just having is, how do we think about expansion throughout the state? And I know, again, firsthand from being a CEO and a CFO and a COO, you don't want to have to get on a plane to go somewhere else. You want to be able to just to drive to Norwood or to Marlboro and have a lot of you know, active engagement with your engineers and your folks on the manufacturing floor and your ops people. And so how do we think about the whole state as we think about life sciences? And how do we think about all kinds of pathways? So not just our PhDs, but also our high school grads, our community college grads, our vocational school grads. And so that is really the next phase as we think about um, economic development. So again, I'm so honored, and a huge congratulations also to all of the, um, the winners of the, uh, the tax incentives. You know, one of the things I was really excited about in reading about the winners and, and voting on them was that uh, more than half of them are going to companies uh, outside of Boston and Cambridge, and 80% of the jobs created are going to be outside of that area as well. So we need every part of our state and every, every one of our humans to be successful. So we're very grateful for all of you. I'm very excited to work on this together. And go Team Massachusetts. This is the time we're going to go. Uh, we're in it to win it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, and thank you all for coming today. We're happy to take questions related to this topic, and then I'll see some of you afterwards. Yes? Governor, uh, Rob Weissman at Boston Borough, how are you? Good morning, Rob. Good morning. Uh, is there anything you can say about the uh, Life Science 3.0? I think the Secretary referred to this economic development process. Will you reauthorize the uh, Baker uh, Life Sciences funding, and if so, how much? Yeah. Well, Rob, you're going to hear us talk a lot about things this month related to life sciences, so I'll, I'll hold on some of that. But, you know, I think I am here today, the team is here today, because we recognize the absolute imperative to support, invest in, work together with our life sciences industry. It's wonderful for the companies, yes. It's really, really important for our state, including creating economic growth and opportunities for people as you heard, around the state. So I think there are a number of things that can and should happen. Uh, it's not just about authorization uh, and funding. It's about things that I talked about, 
driving a workforce, creating those pipelines, working with our educational institutions and our companies to make sure that we've done the inventory, we match it with the programming, and people are ready to go. You know, it also means making the conditions for growth and, and support uh, uh, absolutely uh, a priority, which is why I mentioned housing, because I know one of the things that, you know, is a concern here in the state is the cost of housing, which is why we're re working really, really hard, the lieutenant governor and myself and the team on addressing housing shortages in the state. So I look forward to seeing you more, having more conversations with you. Um, but I think you should leave here today with an understanding that this administration is fully behind life sciences. It's not the only sector in our state. We're lucky to have any number of sectors that we can lean into and we must. But life sciences um, exists here in an ecosystem like no other, not just in this country, but in this world. I just answered that question, <laughs> Rob. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. Yeah, thanks everybody for coming. Have a great day. And not only do they make vaccines, but there's a nice spread out here for folks. So thank you. Thank you very much to Stefan and everybody at, at Moderna for hosting us today. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be with you.